the Carolina Panthers, made it known that general manager Marty Herney will leave the team at the end of the 2020 season. A not all that unusual move. If you know you're going to do it, go ahead and do it. And it's entirely possible. And this is where we get skeptical about what really meets the eye. It was entirely possible that David Tepper, the owner of the team, was concerned that word was going to get out that that they're looking at potential candidates. That's the balance you strike once you know you're going to move on from a GM or a coach. How involved are you in looking for replacements and how concerned are you it's going to become public before you actually make it known that the relationship is ending? There's no way that David Tepper, the owner of that team, just rolled out of bed this morning and said, I need a new GM. This clearly is something that's been planned. It's been strategized. And my guess is this is when David Tepper all along planned to make it known that it was going to be a parting of the ways and the Panthers aren't going to use a, a third-party search firm. Tepper's a guy, he's one of the richest guys in the NFL, and he's brilliant and he's tactical. And my guess is he's had a plan in place for a long time to make this move, and he's been implementing it and unfolding it. And today we all found out about it. But I'm surprised that he waited as long as he did to make a change at general manager. I thought it would be inevitable after he bought the team. But uh, now it's upon us, and now we have five teams looking for general managers as the end of the season approaches, Shereen. Yeah, Mike, I think it's a decision that was already made as well, and especially since he said he already had a list of candidates, and maybe it's a situation where you have a list of candidates anyway. I know a lot of teams do that, have candidates that they have in mind. But also, Mike, I am thinking that they thought they were falling behind the other four teams who were looking for a GM, and if you're going to make that move, now's the time to do it and get on the train and and figure out who your GM's going to be and start interviewing those candidates because we know those other teams have started interviews. They've announced them. They've gone through some of the candidates, and they have probably the candidate in mind that they want to hire or getting close to that. So the Panthers, if they were going to make the move, needed to do it, and they have done it. Uh, it, it's going to be a reverse of what you usually see. Usually the GM hires the head coach, and in this case the head coach is going to have a say in the GM. We saw that in Houston. It didn't work out so well for Brian Gain. Hopefully it works out uh, better for whoever the GM of the Panthers is. I'm not a big fan of this GM being hired while there's still a head coach and a coach in whom a huge investment has been made. Whoever takes that job knows going in. They're not going to just write a check and buy out Matt Rule when they're paying him, what is it, seven, eight, nine million million a year after only one season as the coach of the team. And th that's the challenge that David Tepper is now going to have, finding a general manager who is fully on board with the structure. And then the question is, who has the power? Does the coach have the power? Does the GM have the power? And if the coach has the power, specifically final say over the draft and the 53-man roster, it becomes harder to hire a GM because you have to be able to offer – to someone who is currently an executive with another team, whether it's the director of college scouting or some other title less than GM, you've got to give them GM powers or the team can say, no, you're not allowed to hire him. That's why John Lynch ended up being the GM of the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan had all the power. He couldn't hire somebody from another team. He had to go to somebody who was unattached, and Lynch, of course, was working in the media at the time. Same thing with John Gruden when he became the coach of the Raiders. After one year, Reggie McKenzie's gone. John Gruden's got the power. They had to hire Mike Mayock. He was unattached. I'm not saying these guys are unqualified, but they're unattached, and it makes it easier to hire these guys because the coach is in charge. And, look, I, maybe Matt Rule's done enough that David Tepper is giving Matt Rule the keys to the car. And Matt Rule is going to be the one who picks the GM, and it's going to be a Bill Belichick type of a situation where the GM is the one who is setting the table for the head coach, Shereen. Yeah, and David Tepper also said today, Mike, that it's going to be analytic-driven and data-driven, and that was where the philosophical differences came in with Marty Herney and why they moved on, and that's a big part of what Matt Rule does is the analytics and, and the data. And so that's who they're going to be looking for is somebody who really stresses that, and that's what they want in their organization, and we're going to see how that works out. And David Tepper would not address whether the, the signing of – uh, the signing of Teddy Bridgewater played into that decision or not, but he did say that it was philosophical differences. So now they can get a new GM and we'll see how much power or more power that Matt Rule has now.
But Bridgewater meshed with Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator. Bridgewater knew the offense that Brady was going to run, and it's worked. They've been better than I thought they were going to be. They're not a playoff contender. Nobody expected it. Everybody expected 2-14 and 14 at best. So they have been better under Matt Rule, and we'll see where it goes from here. This one quote stands out for me, and I remember seeing it the first time I watched the All or Nothing series 2019 when it focused on the Carolina Panthers. David Tepper writing in the back of an SUV saying this, the league is set to be 8-8. Eight and eight. Everything is fair in this league. So if you have better coaches, better GMs, some advantages with facilities, advantages with training, management process, whatever those, whatever is, you know, analytics, whatever that is to give you an edge, that's what you need, and you need a good quarterback. That was the moment for me that I thought, uh-oh, it's just a matter of time before Ron Rivera's gone and Marty Herney's gone. Rivera went last year. Herney goes now. There will be a new GM in Carolina. One of the teams looking for both a new GM and a new head coach, the Houston Texans. They've announced that they have met with Jim Caldwell, former Colts and Lions head coach, to be the Texans head coach. Now, it's a little bit backwards to hire or to at least consider coaches before you have a GM. And it makes me wonder who's going to have the juice in Houston. And they said met. I thought there was a memo that said they can only do virtual meetings through the end of the season. Maybe they maybe they're just taking a liberty with the term. And nowadays that's how 98 percent of all meetings happen anyway. But Caldwell as a potential candidate to coach the Texans. That's fine as long as the next GM is on board with Caldwell being the coach of the Texans. And I'd hate to think that the Texans are thinking seriously about coaching candidates until they know who the GM is going to be, Shireen. Yeah, it seems weird, Mike, that they would meet with him now, but it does fulfill, obviously, the Rooney rule. But I hope they're giving him serious consideration, and this isn't just to comply with the Rooney rule, which is what it seems, frankly, right now. But I do hope if they're interviewing him, they give him serious consideration, and this isn't just to check off that box that, hey, we, we've done our minority interview, and now we can move on with who we really want. Let's take this seriously and interview some candidates who you really want to hire. And Jim Caldwell certainly deserves to be in that category of coaches you would ser seriously consider with what he did in Indianapolis and then, frankly, what he did in Detroit and what Detroit's done after he left there. But let's hope it's just not checking that box, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.